Now, pretty much everyone has an idea of how to create wealth, but how about transforming that into a million dollar business? I'm in Rwanda, the land of a thousand hills, to find out what it takes to build a successful business. Entrepreneurship is often seen as a solution to many challenges facing the youth in Africa, such as unemployment and education. But what does it really take to build a successful business? I'm now on my way to Kayonza District, about two hours away from Kigali City, to meet with one of Rwanda's biggest paper producers. He's just a 30-year-old who has gone ahead to sign million-dollar export deals all over the world in just a period of four years. Hey, hi Maggie. What's up? Good, how are you? Good. Can I try some of this? No, 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 don't try. Be careful, it's very hot. Diego Tuahira is a music promoter turned chili farmer. From just a tenth of a hectare, he now owns over 40 hectares of land where he grows paper for both the local and international market. So, how have you been able to build such a huge chili empire? Oh my god, 40 hectares of land? It wasn't a simple journey. Uh, we started this as a simple farmer. Yeah. Uh, this was the uh, end of 2013. Let alone, uh, we couldn't see, uh, make good profit because they, we were dealing with perishable crop yeah. and we didn't have farming contract before putting seeds in the soil. And then later, we said, how can we improve our business and make it sustainable? We got a, a contract by attending different exhibition. The contract uh, we've gotten it was uh, with an export of fresh chili to the UK market. We didn't make good money as we were had uh, projected uh, because of the seeds were not satisfied. But let alone by ex attending this international exhibition, we've managed to get a good client with who knows how uh, we had to source the light uh, planting material and later on we start to export on our own but also as you know the export market requires yeah. only uh, first grade then I would say why, how, what, are we, where are we going to take this second grade then how, that's how we start with now trying to do our small processing unity we start by producing chill oil and also we were lucky because our first product it has a lot of good feedback. 40 hectares of land, that's really huge. Let's look at the season. How much do you harvest? Yeah, maybe if we say average, or we can say five ton dry chili uh, a hectare, then uh, so if 40 you say hectares, 40, 200 hectares. Wow, that's per season, that could be six months? Well, yes, yeah, six months, yeah, we can harvest 200 tons, which is uh, about 200,000. Wow. Okay, that means that you make much more than 200,000 because if you're exporting. Yeah, because well, so, we don't have only this only 40 hectares on our own because we also buy from other farmers. We have about 1,000 farmers supplying our factory and some of chili are used for the final products of the chili oil and the chili sauce and other chili we export as raw material. So then the 200,000 I'm saying is from raw material only. How much profit would you make in a year? In a year, if everything goes well, as I said, you get about one million about. Oh my God, a million dollar out of this. That means with the raw with the finished product, you can even go to more than a million. Yes, 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 because uh, our product is a new and it has, it's getting good feedback. It's a success. So we're expecting like the more we get more market, we can get more profit, like more than a million, because uh, according to the contract we have now, we can have, we can show that we can have more than that. That's pretty good money. That mean, means I can slay some of it. <laughs> In part one of this story, we looked at how to build a successful business. But what's really the recipe for success? When I look around, it seems like capital has never been a problem for you. How do you go about that? Yeah, I just started as, uh, as with smaller capital, as then we grow progressively. Of, uh, we could sell and reinvest again what we had. How many countries do you export to now? We export uh, in about 10 countries. 
uh, some of them are in Asia and uh, one of them in Africa and others in Europe and America. How do you uh, look for this market? Uh, we found markets by attending some international exhibitions. So does, does it mean that every year you get a client from attending an exhibition? Yes, yes, because uh, most of the time you, you meet different clients but you, you'd main with one. But we have different contacts, so much contact. One. But by attending any conferences, we get new contracts. There are approximately $145,000 millionaires living in Africa, with Rwanda having 600 millionaires and 30 multimillionaires as of 2017, according to the Free Asia Bankworth Report. Diego has joined the Millionaires Club in Rwanda, but equally, other young entrepreneurs are also hungry to join him. And I'm Eugene Cheshmana. We, we are CCE. CCE. We do farming. We are currently in a horticultural farm farming. I'm Henry Karen Sabjimuchiza. I am the CEO and founder of GSG Cafe, the only company here that makes instant coffee. My name is Regis Mugianeza. I'm a director and co-founder at Curry Group. We are doing uh, value addition to sweet potatoes where we make bread, cakes and be sweet out of it. And over a meal seasoned with chili from Diego's farm, these entrepreneurs discuss the recipe for success. Are you guys ready to shoot some questions? Yes. yes sure. Voila, why not? Thank you, Diego. So I'll ask you one question. As a farmer, I'm a soil farmer, we faced two main problems, like climate change and finance. How did you manage to get those problems and continue, especially in Rwanda? And what can you advise me? I started with less than $300, so which was easier to save because I worked before somewhere. And later, after verifying my model, I could approach uh, people to give uh, some money, and then I, after uh, harvesting, I pay them back. Then uh, for the climate change, uh, we are lucky that in Rwanda we have a good climate. For example, to avoid the drought, we make sure our farm are close to the permanent source of water and we use the irrigation equipment like uh, that's because uh, we, we, uh, we can't lay like it will rain, you know. You need, you need to make sure you have the irrigation equipment and you are close to the permanent source of water. I saw a lot of employees here. How did you manage to get the right person? You start, you know, with a uh, few staff, uh, some, some go, uh, left, others, uh, they believe in your vision, you keep growing, you bring others, you put, you give your, uh, your, you show them your vision, some of them who believe in your vision are the ones who are remaining as your employees. Because we may not pay uh, enough amount than other employers, but uh, some of the employees, believe in your vision, then they, they, they accept to stay with you. And then our role is just to give them the right trainings and they make sure they have the right, enough skills to, to do their job. Is this business really profitable? The business is profitable because uh, when you see how we started, we started on a tennis of hectare, that was end of 2013. Then we grew up on two hectares. Now uh, we can say, we managed to get a, a processing unity. We managed to, to increase even, uh, we started as one businessman. Now we have more than 30 employees. So I can say the business is profitable. Give me tips how to close big deals. One, you need to have your unique product. Second, uh, attend the right international exhibition or the local exhibition for your product. The number three, you need to communicate regularly with your clients. Number four, you need to be consistent in your product.